I am Zhenia Parrish. I'm a painter. And we are at the Blackhead, where I also work. Um, inside, we have a collaborative space and powers and energy creating. We have musicians and painting. We have the tarot. And it's incredible to partake with incredible human beings. It's history. It's community, it's words, it's talking, it's communicating. So through all kinds of arts, either it's painting, music, and you name it, any creative take is affecting our social environment, community. It lives a word, it could be healing, could be like right on like thank you for saying this um, and that it unites it really unites the community and further universe yeah. well good afternoon everyone uh, and thank you for being here it is a pleasure to see this sea of red focused on how we are making our city safer. And we know that when moms are focused on an issue, we see real change. So I wanna thank you for your advocacy here locally. Uh, thank you for your advocacy nationally, uh, because I think a lot of what we have to do related to removing illegal guns from our street needs a federal push in addition to a local uh, push. Uh, we are certainly outraged um, by the level of violence that many of our communities are experiencing, especially now, with the increase of shootings and, sadly, the increase of homicides. We recognize in our city that this is a public health issue in addition to a public safety issue. We know, uh, as you do, uh, every day in our nation people are dying and being injured. Um, sometimes critically injured, permanently injured uh, from gun violence. Nearly 40,000 people a year, 40,000 die from guns. And as a nation, uh, we are spending millions of dollars treating victims of violence uh, in our trauma centers and emergency medical systems. Uh, earlier this week, uh, we announced how well the city was doing with increased revenues coming in uh, to our city. And so in a city as prosperous as ours, the necessary investments on all sides of this problem can be made, and we look forward to talking with you, but with you about that in the future. So good luck today, and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you. But you know, we've been talking with Jonathan and others about this. It's, it's not enough. We have to do more. We have to have a focused effort. We need a czar who is really going to take this forward. We have an entertainment czar, you know, but we don't have a gun violence czar in our city. So thank you for what you've been doing. And we just really wanted to come here and tell you what we need from you as our council member and as a council member in, in this city. It's not all of us are from Ward 5, so thank you. Well, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate you all being here. I always uh, really am delighted when I see uh, the red shirts uh, in the building because I know what you all can do with your advocacy. Uh, I think uh, you, I see one page is about the NARAC on the table. Uh, it's in, in large part because of people who came together, the coalition uh, made up of uh, any number of people, including residents who live in communities, some who have been impacted by gun violence, others who've studied the issue, uh, academics, uh, all came together and said, we need to see the NEAR Act. Um, and, and you all were instrumental to that as well, providing testimony at hearings, uh, and really pushing to make sure it ultimately got funded the way that it has. I think we have to continue to push. As you mentioned, uh, I, for one, do not think that we're doing enough uh, to end gun violence in the District of Columbia, and that we've got to do more. Uh, you know, sadly, uh, your children, uh, and perhaps these children, and we all know children who are impacted by gun violence uh, and sh who shouldn't uh, have to deal with the sounds of gunfire. Uh, and again, it, it, I mean, sadly, it's the same sounds of gunfire that, that I heard when I was growing up in just a little bit, that you know, the same sort of trauma that they carry into the schoolhouse, um, which you know, keeps them from focusing on 
uh, the things that we otherwise want them to attend school for, like mm -hmm. their core subjects, uh, they've got to deal with you know the images and the sounds uh, that they hear you know through their windows at night, uh, and and it's unacceptable. Uh, and, and the more we can have folks like you help to advocate and spread the word, so that everybody <coughs> in the district is outraged when somebody is killed by a gun. Uh, I think the faster we'll get to the amount of resources that it really takes to change the odds for our youth as it relates to uh, their interactions with uh, individuals who have been impacted by gun violence and their own uh, unfortunate uh, interactions and experiences with gun violence here in the District of Columbia. So uh, I'm going to keep fighting for it. Uh, I tell folks, and, and, and I know some of you already know this, uh, the work that I do down here every single day, uh, I view through the prism of my youth growing up in the District of Columbia, uh, having lost uh, my godfather when I was, uh, you know, 13 years old, uh, having experienced what it's like to, to, to have somebody in my arms who's who, who been shot by a gun. Uh, those are the types of things that I don't want anybody to ever have to experience. Uh, and yet, you know, hundreds of people in this city experience that every single year. Uh, and until we see the numbers decrease, we're up this year uh, in terms of homicides uh, over where we were at this time last year. Uh, despite our efforts, uh, which to me just suggests that there is so much more we have to do uh, to get the resources into these communities. I think the focus on intervention and prevention uh, needs to be expanded. I appreciate some of the progress we've seen both uh, in the implementation of the NARE Act through the ONE's office as well as through the Attorney General's uh, uh, implementation of the NARE Act to cure yeah. violence. And so uh, we've got to see that stuff get expanded. We, we're going to see it expanded in Ward 5. Uh, both in the Brentwood, Saratoga, Langley Park area, as well as in the sort of Eckington, uh, Truxton Circle, Hanover Place area, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Another residents are as well, but there's still a number of na neighborhoods who, who aren't going to be touched directly by this uh, neighborhood-based violence prevention and intervention. We got to do more in the hospitals, in our emergency rooms, where these victims are being transported and their families and friends are coming to grieve and perhaps plot retaliation. Right, so we got to have more hospital-based. Uh, prevention and intervention that's occurring as well. Uh, and again, we're seeing more of it, uh, but we've got to do more as well. So again, I appreciate you all being down here. You all know that I am a partner. My door is always open. I was in a hearing, so I apologize for being late, but as soon as I got when I came right upstairs to make sure I had an opportunity to interact with you. I'm Dory Nolt. I live in Ward 5 in D.C., and I'm a volunteer leader with Moms Demand Action D.C. Art is such a critical piece to actually implementing the policy that needs to happen to protect lives and to address trauma after violence happens. Art is the thread that binds all of us together. It starts with uh, the folks who have experienced trauma uh, and using art to tap into that and to really explore that trauma and address it. And ta uh, trauma is a demon. It, it's attacking that demon. You use art to do that. Uh, art can be so visually impactful around policy like gun violence prevention policy, violence prevention programs. Uh, today, here at the uh, Wilson Building, we're going to have uh, everybody holding backpacks with names of gun violence victims on them. That's art. That's impactful. That visual really drives a, a narrative and a story. I think about the t-shirts at the church. I think it's on Q Street. Is that right? Do you remember? Uh, St. Mark's? Yeah. Uh, I don't recall the okay. street, but it's St. Mark's. I'll sort of, I think about the t-shirts mm -hmm. uh, at a local church Absolutely. that represent gun violence victims in the district. That's art. That's impactful. I think about the amazing mural at Barracks Row that Lauren Renford and the Pathways to Power students put together um, of five gun violence victims in this city, young ones whose lives were stolen far too early. That's incredibly impactful. So art is really the thread through all of it, uh, and it, it is what pushes people toward the policy that needs to happen.